Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for today's presentation, Using a Fund to Invest in Bitcoin Mining with Zachary Winner. My name is William Mucker, and I'm a client executive with Camaplan. Before we get started, I have a quick note and a brief disclosure to go through. If you have any questions for Zach, please use the Q&A function on your screen at any time throughout the presentation, and Zach will address them at the end. Here's a disclosure just to let you know that this webinar is stri strictly for educational purposes. Camaplan is a neutral third-party administrator of IRAs. We do not offer any investments, nor do we endorse any person, company, or product. We highly suggest that you do your own due diligence before making any investments with your retirement accounts or other monies. We also do not provide any advice. We at Camaplan are not attorneys, financial advisors, or tax professionals. If you need any assistance making decisions in any of those areas, we recommend that you consult with your team of licensed professionals. Here's my contact information. If you or anyone or any one of your like-minded friends or family have any questions about how you can utilize this information presented today with a self-directed IRA, please feel free to contact me. I would be more than happy to answer any of your questions. And without further ado, I'll pass the controls over to Zach, and I hope you enjoy the presentation. Okay, let me transfer this over. All right. Thank you, William. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining on this uh, this webinar. I'm Zach Winner. I'm the CEO of Cornerstone Investments. And today we're going to be talking about investing in a Bitcoin mining fund. And you could do this directly with, uh, with uh, non-IRA investments, or you could do it with uh, IRA, self-directed IRA investments through Cam and Plan. So we'll briefly go over what Bitcoin is, what the strengths of Bitcoin are, uh, we'll delve a little bit into describing what Bitcoin mining is, and then we'll get into the benefits of investing in Bitcoin mining through our Bitcoin mining fund. And uh, our disclaimer as well, this uh, presentation is for educational purposes only. Um, we're not offering uh, security. You should do your own diligence before making an investment decision, and all investments involve risk. So let's start with a definition of what Bitcoin is. Well, it's a digital commodity. A lot of people refer to Bitcoin as digital gold, and it's got a very finite supply. There will only be 21 million Bitcoin ever produced, and already over 90% of them have been produced or mined. That's the way they're produced, they're mined, and we'll get into a little into that in, in a bit. But, but over 90% has already been produced, and the remaining 10% will be produced over the next 118 years. Now, one of the other unique things about Bitcoin is the ownership is recorded on a distributed ledger called the blockchain. And by distributed ledger, I mean there are computers around the world that have that same ledger and they're verifying all of the transactions on the ledger. And having this blockchain of multiple redundant ledgers around the world helps secure the network and prevent fraud. So let's get into some of the strengths of Bitcoin. One of the greatest strengths is its known and fixed scarcity. As I mentioned, there will only be 21 million Bitcoin ever produced. We've already issued over 90% of them, and the remainder will be issued over the next 118 years. Now, Bitcoin supply is currently increasing at a rate of less than 2% a year. If you compare that to gold, for example, Gold supply has historically been increasing at a rate of around 2%. So Bitcoin's current new supply hitting the market is less than the amount of gold supply that's hitting the market. And about every four years, the amount of supply is cut in half. So in 2024, um, the amount of supply hitting the market will be less than 1%, so less than half of gold. Now, there are models that look at the amount of supply and, and the amount of new supply coming onto the market. Those models are called stock to flow models. They look at the current inventory on the market and the amount of new inventory coming on the market. And this stock to flow model has been applied to gold. It's been applied to silver. It's been applied to housing and many other commodities. When you apply this stock to flow model 
to Bitcoin, that's the chart here that you see on your screen. And the stock to flow pr price projection is this thin blue line. And if you look all the way up and to the right, you can see that the stock to flow model is projecting that the price of Bitcoin will eventually reach over $1 million. Today, it's trading at around $24,000. Now, this rainbow-colored jagged line overlaid on top of it, that's what the actual price of Bitcoin has been. So you can see, so far, it's been, it's been roughly following the stock-to-flow model. Now, one of the other great strengths of Bitcoin is its wide institutional adoption. Uh, Goldman Sachs has um, said that it sees huge institutional demand for Bitcoin with no signs of it abating. JP Morgan Chase recently conservatively estimated the current demand is about $600 billion. And you're seeing more and more hedge funds and pension funds and life insurance companies uh, invest in it and open it up to their investors. So for example, Massachusetts Mutual Life Insurance Company or Mass Mutual invested $100 million of their portfolio into Bitcoin. And just in the last several months, we've seen both BlackRock and Fidelity Investments issue press releases saying that they're now opening up Bitcoin as an asset class that their investors can invest in. And that's a huge development. Combined BlackRock and Fidelity Investments have about $13 trillion in assets under management. So if just 1% of that $13 trillion is allocated to Bitcoin, that's $130 billion of additional market interest that will, uh, again, help increase the demand for, for Bitcoin. So that's the institutional adoption, the use of Bitcoin as a store of value. The other way Bitcoin is used is as a means of payment to pay for goods and services. And that's being increasingly adopted as well. So a Deloitte 2022 survey uh, said accepting Bitcoin is a high priority for over 85% of its U.S. merchants. PayPal also recently announced that uh, PayPal users can now transfer Bitcoin to external Bitcoin wallets. So that's a big development as well because PayPal, PayPal is used by hundreds of millions of people across the world to move money. So this is a good alternative to move money via, via Bitcoin for very low cost. And PayPal is used increasingly by merchants as a form of payment. So below you can see a sampling of some of the national and international corporations and energy entities who now accept Bitcoin as a means of payment. Now, there's a technology called the Lightning Network that's really going to continue to stimulate the use by consumers of Bitcoin as a means of payment and as a means of transferring money. The Lightning Network will allow anyone to send domestic or international payments of any size with unlimited frequency without bank intermediaries nearly instantly and essentially for free. It's still kind of in its infancy, but it's growing at a very quick rate. Uh, its 90-day growth rate is 13%, and its annual growth, growth rate is 48%. So the growth in the number of consumers who are using network and the transactions per day is increasing at a rate of almost 50% a year. And the Lightning Network really has the potential to displace uh, the ways we're currently transferring money by wire transfer, by Western Union, which are both very expensive alternatives. This is a virtually free way to transfer money. And it also has the potential to displace the credit card industries. If you think about it, uh, most of the time we're paying for goods and services with credit cards and the merchants have to pay those credit card companies one to two and a half percent of the transaction costs versus the Lightning Network, which is essentially free. And the Lightning Network doesn't have fraud. And I don't know about you, but every few months I'm dealing with credit card fraud on one of my credit cards. Each time it happens, I have to go through my credit card statement, look to see if there's other fraudulent charges. I have to cancel the card, wait for a new card to be issued. It's a big hassle. And the Lightning Network uh, has the potential to uh, really solve that problem. So that's a quick kind of overview of 
of Bitcoin and some of the big benefits of Bitcoin. Now let's get into Bitcoin mining. So what is Bitcoin mining? Well, the Bitcoin network is maintained and secured by miners or computers, and they are a di distributed group of economically motivated actors. And the process of mining is what keeps the network consensus. So what do Bitcoin miners actually do? Well, miners add new blocks of transactions to the ledger and new blocks of transactions are added about every 10 minutes. Now, in order to mine these new blocks, miners are competing to solve a very, very complex cryptographic puzzle. And that process of competing to solve this cryptographic puzzle and verify the batch of transactions is called proof of work. Every 10 minutes, only the fastest miner, the first one to solve the cryptographic puzzle, is awarded the Bitcoin for solving that cryptographic puzzle. And they're awarded by receiving new Bitcoin. That's how Bitcoin is issued to the marketplace. So right now, about every 10 minutes, 6.25 new Bitcoin are issued to the miner who solves that cryptographic puzzle and verifies the transactions that get added to the blockchain. Now, they also get some lesser amount in transaction fees. And as I mentioned, every four years, approximately, the amount of Bitcoin that are awarded every 10 minutes gets cut in half. So in 2024, the amount of new Bitcoin is going to go down from 6.25 issued every 10 minutes to 3.125. Now, why is mining important? Well, miners facilitate the issuance of new Bitcoin and miners are adding new transactions to the ledger. And this gives the transactions a permanent order in the ledger. Once they're on the ledger, you can't revise the ownership, uh, the ownership uh, process of who, uh, who owned the Bitcoin at what point. It's permanently booked into the ledger. Now, mining is a permissionless nature. And by that, I mean, there's no one centralized authority that can approve whether or not you're allowed to mine. Anybody can mine, it's permissionless. And as a result, there are miners spread around the world. And this makes for a more secure Bitcoin uh, network because it minimizes the disruption if there's downtime in the um, electricity being used to operate the Bitcoin miners, if there's a uh, internet outage, if there's an outage of electricity or, or internet affecting one batch of Bitcoin miners, the Bitcoin miners in the other parts of the country and the other parts of the world will still be operating. And so it helps ensure that the Bitcoin network remains operational 24 seven. So here's a quick kind of summary of the process of Bitcoin mining. Every 10 minutes, new transactions are broadcast to the Bitcoin mining network and then miners are competing to solve that very complex cryptographic puzzle. Now, once a miner finds a solution, a new block is broadcast, it's verified, and it's added to the blockchain. And the winning miner is awarded their block subsidy, the new Bitcoin, and their transaction fees. And after the new block is found, miners adopt it, and then they work on the next batch of transactions. So now let's talk about some of the benefits of Bitcoin mining, and particularly some of the benefits of mining through a Bitcoin mining fund where you're doing it passively and the fund operators are hand handling the technical aspects. So a couple of the biggest benefits are cash flow and tax benefits. On the cash flow side, just like investing in a real estate syndication, when you invest in the Bitcoin mining fund, you'll receive periodic distributions. In our case, the distributions are monthly and the investors will have their choice of receiving distributions in either Bitcoin or US dollars. Now there's also a significant tax benefit. Uh, investors will be able to depreciate between 70 to 75% of their initial investment as a year one depreciation tax write-off. And that's because about 70 to 75% of the uh, investment will go towards purchasing the Bitcoin mining computers, which are treated as business expenses and are fully depreciable in year one. Now, one of the big benefits 
of acquiring Bitcoin through mining is you're getting it at a discount. The average cost to mine one Bitcoin in the industry is somewhere between twelve to fifteen thousand dollars. It varies depending but that's roughly the range of the cost to mine one Bitcoin. If you compare that to the current price, today it's trading at around $24,000. And so you can see acquiring Bitcoin through mining is getting Bitcoin at a large discount. Now you're also dollar cost averaging into Bitcoin, which is a good way to acquire an asset that can be volatile. And as we know, Bitcoin can be on the short term very volatile. So Bitcoin mining is very stable. We know what the costs are. They're relatively stable every month. The two main monthly expenses are the cost of electricity, and we're locking in the electricity on a long-term power purchase agreement, and the hosting costs. The hosting company is the company that's maintaining the computers, making sure they're up and running on a daily basis, and maximizing the amount of Bitcoin that's being generated. So those two costs are relatively stable. So acquiring Bitcoin through Bitcoin mining gives you the ability to dollar cost average into Bitcoin. You're generating Bitcoin every day, receiving Bitcoin distributions every month, regardless of whether the price of Bitcoin is 24,000 today or whether it goes to 30,000 or 100,000 or 500,000. And so this is a very good way to dollar cost average into Bitcoin. Now let's get into a few of the specifics about this Bitcoin mining fund. Uh, again, it's the opportunity to, to acquire Bitcoin at a significant discount and with downside protection and the ability to dollar cost average into acquiring Bitcoin every day through mining. And we'll be investing in Bitcoin at an institutional scale level. The um, pro project will be a one megawatt project and that gives us the ability to be much more competitive in the price of electricity we're negotiating, the hosting agreement that we're negotiating, the cost of the computers. We're also accessing um, the latest computers that are specifically manufactured just for Bitcoin mining. They're very, very fast computers called ASIC computers. And because we're buying them at a bulk rate, we're getting them at a very good discount. We're also using state-of-the-art technology called immersion technology, and I'll get into that in a few slides. And uh, again, we've negotiated very low-cost, long-term power purchase agreements and hosting agreements. So as I mentioned, uh, we will be acquiring the miners. This is a one megawatt project, so we'll be acquiring 180 Bitcoin mining machines, and we're getting them at very favorable rates. And the reason is really twofold. One is the cost of these machines tends to trail the cost of Bitcoin, and the, the price of Bitcoin has come down significantly off its high back in November of last year. And that, coupled with the fact that we're buying in bulk, gives us the ability to obtain these, these machines at a significant discount to what they cost back at the end of last year. Now, we're using immersion cooling technology, and this is a, a state-of-the-art technology that uh, most, if not all, of the publicly traded Bitcoin mining companies are switching to. And basically, the immersion cooling technology is where we take large immersion cooling racks. And here's a photo of one. And you can see there's the racks are filled with a non-conductive fluid. And then we submerge the computers into there. And this does a few things. One, it keeps the computers uh, much cleaner. They break down much less frequently. There's, they're not exposed to dust. Um, it's a much more efficient process than air-cooled. And because we're able to keep them cleaner and much cooler, we'll be, we are able to operate them at a much faster rate than they would directly out of the box. That uh, process of optimizing the computers is called overclocking. And by using the emergence, emergent, immersion technology, we're able to optimize these computers to operate at a rate that's approximately 30 to 40% faster, depending on the machines. And so that gives us the ability to gener increase our profits by 30 to 50%.
now again as since we're entering into a one megawatt project power purchase agreement we're able to lock in very low electricity costs we're looking at electricity costs somewhere between four to five cents per kilowatt hour now that's among the lowest rates in the country if you compare that to where i live Los Angeles Department of Water and Power charges its residents 19 to 32 cents per kilowatt hour. We've also negotiated a very favorable hosting agreement. The, again, the hosting company is the company that ensures that the computers uh, are maintaining their maximum operational capabilities to maximize our Bitcoin profit being generated. Um, <clears throat> and we've also negotiated a discount with the pooling company. So as you recall, as I mentioned, um, every 10 minutes, only one Bitcoin mining computer is awarded the Bitcoin subsidy. Now, because only one computer is awarded at every 10 minutes, Bitcoin miners pool their resources into Bitcoin mining pools. And that way, we're insured to get Bitcoin every day. So we're looking at pooling with an industry leader called Luxor. We've negotiated a 50% discount. And, uh, and again, the pooling service is a way that helps us ensure that we're generating Bitcoin every day. And the way it works with the pooling companies is each computer uh, contributes a certain amount of, of uh, energy or hash rate. And the amount of Bitcoin they received is pro rata based off of the amount of hash rate they're contributing to the pool. So the Bitcoin mining fund process basically is the Bitcoin mining computers are plugged into the network to validate the transactions and, assure, and secure the blockchain, and they're rewarded Bitcoin for the process. The Bitcoin mining pool will then transfer our mined Bitcoin each day, and that will go to the Bitcoin mining funds Bitcoin wallet. And at the end of each month, we will look at our monthly expenses and we'll sell the Bitcoin necessary to pay for our monthly expenses, and then the remainder will be distributed, and investors will have the option of receiving their distributions either in U.S. dollars or in Bitcoin. So in general, the fund terms, um, we're looking at actually a seven-year Bitcoin mining fund, so it'll be operational for seven years. In year one, investors will be able, be able to depreciate about 70 to 75% of their initial investment. Now, investors will receive 90% of the Bitcoin that's distributed until their initial capital is fully returned. And we're anticipating that will take approximately 26 months. After that, the investors will receive 70% of all of the Bitcoin that's distributed each month and the general partners will receive 30%. Again, investors can choose to receive their distributions in US dollars or in Bitcoin. The minimum investment amount is $50,000. Um, a few of the safeguards we built into this fund, all of the machines will be insured against uh, uh, casualty, loss, or theft. Another uh, very conservative approach that we've taken to this fund is we're not taking on any debt. There's no debt. So um, each month after we pay our expenses, there's no debt payment to pay before the investors receive their distributions. And the other safeguard we put in place is we will have a $180,000 capital reserve account to cover any expenses if we need to. So we don't think we'll need to, but if the price of Bitcoin were to drop precipitously, we could tap into that $180,000 to pay for any of our ongoing expenses. And we projected Bitcoin would have to drop below 11,500 in order to necessitate, necessitate us to start to tap into that reserve account. And today, again, that's, Bitcoin is trading at $24,000. So it would have to drop by more than 50% in order for us to need to tap into that. Now, at the end of the fund, any amounts that we don't uh, use are returned back to the investors. So we have a few additional um, resources, interviews, uh, articles. I'd be happy to send this back to you if you're interested in, um, in accessing any of these videos or articles.
And that is it. Here's um, my contact information. If any of you are interested in jotting this down to get a hold of me to chat about the Bitcoin Mining Fund, to learn a little bit more about it, I'd be happy to chat with you. And that is it. So with that, I'll um, answer any questions that anyone may have. Yeah, as I said in the beginning of the present presentation, excuse me, um, there's a Q and A function function at the bottom of your screen. You should be able to access that now, and you know, please send any questions over to us. All right, I see one just came in. Um, is this for accredited investors only, or do you can you be non-accredited? You can be non-accredited. This is a 506B uh, offering, so we'll be taking both accredited and sophisticated investors. Perfect. Thank you. Any other questions for, for Zach? Looks like your, your presentation was detailed enough where, uh, okay. where they don't even have to ask any questions. I All can't right, think well, of any personally. Okay. Well, great. Well, let me uh, stop sharing so you can take over. And thank you, everybody. I enjoyed presenting to you. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, everybody who attended. Um, if you want to catch more information from Zach, he'll be appearing on Cama Plan's Road to Financial Freedom podcast this upcoming August 22nd. So please feel free to tune into that as well. Uh, thank you, Zach, again for the presentation and everybody have a great rest of your day. Thank you.